And this is actually what happened. These are the statistics for the, uh, for the shoot. You can see at the start of the, uh, the month, it was taking oh, it was about three minutes or so between shots. Now, don't forget, this was the first time this geokinetics crew had actually seen a firefly system. They had never used one before, so it was a learning on the job experience. So, I guess not unsurprisingly, as they got better at it, the time between shots reduced uh, quite substantially. And you can see in here we had our um, battery swap day. The shots per day, um, again, as you might expect, as they got more familiar with the system, uh, the shots per day increased quite dramatically. Now, we were told um, by East Resources, when they first went out, as the, the ultimate customer for this, uh, when they first went out and talked to contractors to understand how long they thought this project would take, um, typically in this area in the past, for a conventional cable-based crew, they were getting about 100 shots per day. We averaged for Firefly over 300 shots per day. And that's key because, um, because of that absolute cutoff date for shooting the seismic data, if the customer hadn't been able to use a system like this, the survey would just not have been shot at all because they couldn't have get it completed on time. And that would have impacted his drilling plans because he would have had to have waited until uh, the snows melted spring of uh, 2009 and try and get a, a cable-based crew in there to, to shoot the data. So it actually uh, improved his drilling logistics and operations by being able to shoot the uh, survey much more quickly. Uh, just a, a picture of a uh, number of shots that were shot each day showing that we started off in this uh, sort of eastern corner and then moved through here. Um, some more about Connex and some of the ways it can help in terms of um, operational planning. You can bring all sorts of information into this, so any sort of aerial imagery. Um, as I mentioned, the Bureau of Land Management were very hot on uh, us keeping away from various parts of the survey. Uh, raptor nests, eagle's nests are protected, so they would define exclusion zones. We were able to mark a lot of those. I think I saw some of these green circles <coughs> here. Uh, rivers, uh, we had, when we scouted the survey, we marked areas where crews could uh, safely cross rivers. Um, so anything like that can be input to the main database. And then as each crew gets its uh, work for the day, it's, it's given it their, their, their nav tool, any of that which impacts them shows up there on their individual nav tool. So if, uh, for example, there's a safe crossing point here on the river, the guys that are laying out these receivers in this area, they will see that and they will be given directions to how to get there. Um, so one of the tools that we're able to provide is this exact, uh, wrapper around the, the system itself. Um, hardware and geophysical QC, that's all taken care of uh, by, by the Connex system as well. This is a, an example of the a log from one of the crews. Um, you can see them coming down here. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. It looks like they stopped for a bit of fishing or something on the side of the river. But uh, you can see this is the sort of reporting that takes place at the end of the day when they come back to camp, they hand in their nav tools. Uh, all of this sort of information can be uh, retrieved, displayed as necessary. Perhaps on a daily basis you wouldn't necessarily do this for every layout crew. But if there was a, a reported HSE in, infringement, for example, you could take a look and find out what happened. And this is just some of the uh, statistics that come out of the, uh, the, the Connex system, looking at, uh, in this case, shooters. <coughs> so you had eight shooters on this crew, and you get a total per crew, average per day, and so on. And you can also do things like find out where they all went. So this is overlaid on a, a 3D Google Earth image, um, so you can find out where these guys were going uh, as they were moving around the, the survey. So for layout crews, or each one of the uh, crews that you define that needs an art tool, you can produce all of these sorts of statistics. Uh, and this, interestingly, is the, uh, the VSI, they were the professional mountaineers. I think it just shows you where they went when they were laying out the, uh, the, the sensors of, the, of this cliff here. The nav tools themselves, this is a typical sort of setup in the, uh, in the base camp. Uh, they all just fit into a rack like this and get downloaded. And, 
this is what we call the NAV server. This has got the main database with all the information on. And this is where uh, the party manager, party chief, would divide up the, the work tasks for the following day uh, for each one of his crews. Uh, that gets programmed into the individual NAV tools and then handed out to the morning meeting and off they go. Um, this is one of the, the NAV tools in action. As I mentioned, they deploy. Uh, here he is with the, the, the auger cutting the hole. They deploy all the sensors into the hole. And then they basically, this, this alignment pole is keyed. So it only goes onto the top of the vector size center in one way. Um, he pushes the button. The uh, GPS takes a reading. Um, and as we know, GPS is good for X and Y locations, not so good for uh, elevations. But he's got the uh, digital elevation model, the subset of that in here. It does a lookup, gets the, um, the elevation for that uh, corresponding X Y location, and beams that by Bluetooth radio into the uh, to the FSU. So that is then all programmed up, and it knows where it is, knows where the sensor is. There's another benefit to that because, uh, and I'm sure many of you have seen us on seismic crews. Um, you are told, you know, if you tell the crew, this is where I'm going to put the locations, you might have them marked out with pin flags. Um, and then they come across, there's either a pool developed overnight, or there's a tree in the way, or a rock, and they've decided to move things to one side. That's fine if they tell you, but of course if they don't, it introduces some geometry errors. In this particular case, even though the hands, the, the NAV tool will tell the crew where to deploy the sensor, if they can't, that doesn't make any difference because you're actually recording where it's actually recorded. The central uh, controller, uh, basically, uh, this is what we used to call it, you know, the dog box to, uh, recorder. As I say, it's more of a command and control center um, with the main radio antenna uh, outside there. <coughs> Seismic data, not really interesting, but it's the only data I have. Hopefully, by the SCG, we, we uh, will have some more uh, processed data. So just in summary, um, the Firefly vision was that we would be able to use wireless technologies to develop a system that was going to improve the image and help the geophysical, the, the, the interpreter, by using full sampling, by enabling us to get many more sensors on the ground, um, to do away with cables and all of the inherent problems that uh, they suffer from, and develop this what we call an ecosystem approach so that we're not just selling a contract or a piece of hardware, we're selling a system that the oil company and contractor can work together. And we're also aiming to reduce the impact on the environment and improve safety on on-site operations. So that's the uh, end of the presentation. And thanks to uh, Geokinetics, East Resources, and of course the Ion Management and the Firefly Engineering Time team.